Hey guys and girls, welcome back to another beautiful video on this beautiful channel, on this beautiful day. How are you guys and girls doing? I hope you're doing great as always. Please check out the description box for all the nice links. Also drop a like, subscribe if you like the content. Check out the top right eye for even more nice links and there you go. So today's video is going to be about classes in different files and this is a question I get a lot, although it's a very simple issue to solve and it's very, very simple. Uh, I will show you how to do it and also give you a few tips on when to do what. So let's say we have our main here. So I'm going to go ahead and create a main CPP that we all have, right? So I'm just going to call it main. And this is going to be your application, of course. Let's do all the regular include IO stream. And then we're going to do in main like that. And then return a zero, right? That's usually how you do it, most probably for your own application. Now, if you were to make a class, you would make it up here, you'd make a class person maybe, and we would do private, public, like that. And then we're going to go ahead and, you know, add the person constructor here, like this. Okay, no issues there. Uh, maybe we'll have a name std string name like that. Let's include string. So this is just a very, very simple class. Okay, you have a name, you have a person, maybe you take in a name here in the constructor, and then you give it a default value of nothing. But in here, you can set this name equals name, like that. So you have a default constructor here. Um, and that's a very simple class, but we did it in the CPP file. And obviously, more often than not, usually you can have really large classes in your CPP files like this, and you just, you know, minimize them and you keep them like this. But often, you know, people want to have classes in separate files. So you can organize your projects. You can make it look really nice. Maybe you want to make a little folder here uh, in your solution. You make a new filter in Visual Studio, at least, where you say maybe this is P P people, ah, uh, persons, persons, let's just call it persons. So you have it like this and you want to have a bunch of classes uh, referring to persons here that are related to persons, anything to do with persons in here and all the hierarchy, everything, inheritance, you want to keep it in here. So you don't have to have everything in the main CPP. Usually that's what we want to accomplish. And this is not what you want. So let's go ahead and try to do that. Now, first of all, before I do it, I'm using Visual Studio 2019. Uh, you can do this using code blocks. You can do this using any free IDE. I recommend using an IDE for this tutorial. Uh, you should have one, even though you're working in, in Linux, there should be IDEs. But uh, if you're working in Linux, you want to do accomplish this, you're going to have to work with your make files probably, or you might want to uh, know how to create object files out of your classes, your CPP and header files, and then link them later on using these commands. So I'm sure there's videos on that. I'll probably make a video on that. I do have a video on something uh, related to that. If you search for Linux on my channel, you'll find it. I haven't done it in a while though. So, but we'll just stick to strictly Visual Studio here. You, it, this works the same in Eclipse and, and all these other IDs, Xcode on Mac, all that. So don't worry. Let's just get started. So I have my persons filter here, just a little folder and one tip in Visual Studio is you can use the class wizard and that will automatically create a class template for you. So let's try that first. Let's call it person and it will even ask you for a base class here. So if you want inheritance, maybe you have a different class here, uh, maybe entity, you want to have inheritance, you can go ahead and put that class name in here. Inline, you don't really have to care about. All you have to do is this and you'll see it will create a header file for you, which is very important and a CPP file. These two will later be built and linked, uh, first built into an object file and that will be linked to your exe. So that's how that works. That's why you need a header and a CPP file, but you only have to think that. Now there's already a person class here. So let's go ahead and remove that first and we'll go ahead and try that again. Add a class person and just go ahead and say okay. So then it creates whatever you require for the person class. Now let me show you what it did create. It created two files, the CPP file and the header file. This is the source file and the header file. The header file contains the declaration of the person class. Okay, it just declares it. It does not define everything in it. It's like a shell. This is your shell, right? 
So here you're going to have your member variables. You're going to have ber variables. You want to have your member function headers or prototypes. Okay. And you want that stuff here just to tell the computer kind of what it what includes what what makes a person class a person class and then the definition for all of those things will be in the cpp file so the cpp file will only have the definitions of static variables uh, and functions member functions and so on and so on. So we'll discuss the static variables just in a second here. Uh, but you will of course have your static variables here as well. Member functions, static member functions will be here as well. Those will be defined in here as well. Uh, but we'll get to that, like I said. Let's start off with the simple stuff. So member variables, what did we say? We said std string age. No, name, sorry. And now the thing is, I'm not including string there i have my string and all that stuff here so i'm just going to go ahead and include string in person instead here and this is why you should use pre-compiled headers now pre-compiled headers is a tutorial that i'm going through in a little bit i already have a video on that i think but you should really get into that i'll get into the tips for all this stuff in, in the end of the video so stick around until then i'll give you a bunch of tips what you should look for uh, when working with classes and all that stuff uh, anyway, so we'll just include string here. Pragma once is great to have. If you haven't seen that, that means that we just want to read this file once. Now, if I were to include uh, person.h here once, what happens? It will check the pragma once. It will check if this has been included ever before. If it's not, it will do it. Otherwise, if I have a duplicate of this line below, in the one below, it will go in again and see, oh, this is already defined. We're not going to define this again. Otherwise, you'll have a multiple definition, and that's an error in C++. So you don't want that. Always secure your files. So either you can do it through pragma once, or you can do it through if, if and def person h, like that. And I'm sure you've seen this. These are pre, these are, uh, uh, what do you call it? Preprocessor directive, sorry, define person h and then end if. So this is the old school way of doing it. Pragma once works just fine. It's much easier to write and it works on all compilers that are pretty modern. So if that doesn't work for you, Pragma once doesn't work, you use this way instead. And what I'm doing then is I'm using the file name as the first part and then the underscore h as just saying that it's a header file basically you don't have to have this here you can have anything here as long as the top and the bottom are the same and that this is unique and several files don't have the same thing obviously but we're just going to use pragma once here like that you can remove that see real nice just one line boom beautiful beautiful and we're going to include person h now this is how you include your class as well you include the header file and that in turn well, it knows which one its CPP file is so because they have the same name. So you always want the same name on your H and CPP file. It should be exactly the same. And it should be the same name as the class. That's the rule here. And then you include that H. And now I can create a person object here. Uh, my person. Like that. Of course, this class is not finished. We have a, a string variable name here. We want... Of course, our, let's remove all that. We want a private section. Section, we want a public section where we have our person constructor that takes a string name and sets it to nothing as a default value. And this is also something I want you to remember. So this name equals name. The way to create a default constructor with input parameters is to give them default values. So then it won't complain that it doesn't have a default constructor. Otherwise, you're going to have to create a default constructor like this. And that's annoying sometimes. So you don't want to do that. So do this and you'll have two in one type situation here. Once you have this, I want you to notice that having a default value like this. Of course, we're not going to define this here. That's the thing. So I'm going to remove that. This is just going to be the header or the prototype for our person class. Now in 
C++ in Visual Studio, you can quickly press Control and the period button to get these quick actions here. You can also right click quick actions and then you can create a definition of person in person.cpp. So it can automatically create that for you in the CPP file and opens a little preview here for you in Visual Studio. You can click this button right here, promote to document to go to the CPP file and then continue working on it. Basically, if you do it manually, you have to do it the exact same way. The CPP file for functions, you have to write the class name, colon, colon, the function name, and then the input parameters, but not, not, remember this, never do default values for parameters in both files. You can only do it in one file, and I usually do it in the header. Don't do it in both files, then it will crash. So. Remember, only in the header file, you want to put your default values for any in parameters. And once you do that, we're just going to do this name equals name. That's all we want to do. Boom. You have your member function here. You have a constructor here. Let's make a member function as well. Let's make a um, std string get name here. Boom, and we're gonna pimp this out a little bit. I know you guys probably, if you know about this, pimping these really nicely, uh, you should know that you can use const string reference to return a member variable. It's very nice, optimized, it returns a reference to it instead of a copy, it can be really good to do. Constant means that you won't be able to change this value. Uh, this constant after the function name, I went through this in the last classes, uh, tutorial, but what this means is that you cannot change any member variables within this function. So that's what the const after means. Okay, you cannot change anything within this member function. So if I press control dot, different create the definition in person CPP, promote to document, I'll be in here. I cannot change this name equals something something here. You can't do that because it's a const after it. The const before this means that outside, wherever I get the name, I cannot change that value through there. So it's basically just a read only here. Now, this is the way you do it. If you have a bunch of consts, you want all the stuff looking exactly the same as here, as this prototype header here, okay? But what you wanna do is you just wanna add the person class name before the function name. So after the return parameter here, the return value, you wanna use the person class name, colon, colon, function name. Boom. And you also want to keep all the cons just like you did in the header file. Once that's done, all this function does is basically return this name. And now we have a function as well that is returning. So you have examples of both here. Boom, boom, and boom. All right. Boom, boom, and boom. Good. Now we can create a person class with a name like that. Boom. We can do a std cout my person dot get name new line and nice okay we run this we will get a name printed out to the screen for us really beautifully really nicely uh, let's just see boom okay nice let's run it storage bam we have a person header file and a cpp file working together in the main as a person dot h has been included here Okay, that's how that works. So this is basically your shell and this is where you define all the stuff. If you want to define your member variables or you want to give them initial starting values, don't do it in here. Don't do it in here like this. Don't do it. Use the constructor for that. All right, give it default values through constructors. Now, if you were to have a int age reference here, a, I don't know why you would have that, but if you would have a, my ref just call it my reference if you have a reference you want to initialize you can't do it in the constructor like that you need to use the initializer list so my ref is whatever is coming from outside you want to put it in here okay that's how you want to do it now references are very unique in that say in that sense so use the initializer list for that if you have a constant let's say const my height like that or const int height Okay, constants are the same. You can't do that in the constructor. You have to do it here. So height equals 220 inches. I don't know how short this guy is, but I'm not that short. <laughs> but if you have constants, you have to do it in the initializer list. And this should have been in the last tutorial, but I'll put it here because 
yeah, you'll know how to do it now. Uh, so do that. You have that. Boom, boom. Well, you know what? We can keep that just in case you guys want. I'll, I'll do 175 meters. This is in meters. This is Sweden. So there you go, guys. That's pretty much it for that. Now you know how to create classes in different files. You can just keep building on this. You can add more function headers here, stuff like that. You can put them in here. Only thing is when you're working with static variables, now static is very unique, right? If you do a static int my stat, you have to initialize that in the CPP. You have to define that in your CPP. So static variables have to be defined here. And then you do it like this person, uh, my stat, and you have to give the type as well. I think I gave an int equals 20. See, so it's defined. So it's an integer static, my stat, you use the type person colon colon the name of the variable and the start value for it. So if I were to create a static, uh, get my stat, static int get my stat like that const okay oh you can't use const after static functions sorry because they're not technically part of the class in that sense they're not they don't change class member variables in that sense so you can't use const after static now i i'm going to define get my stat here in int person get my stat and this is a static function so i can't use this name and stuff in here all right you can't do that you can't really do that. You have to get a game object from outside to change that object's name. But you can do that. If I were to send a game or a person, sorry, person, pointer, person here, I can access all the private variables of that person within this because it's still part of game in one sense. So if you want to change a specific object's variables in a static function, you're going to have to get it from outside because you don't call these outside using a specific object. You write the class colon colon the function name. So if I were to call get my stat, I do person colon colon get my stat. Okay. You can also my stat won't really show there in that sense, but that's because it's under private. You can access it if you put it under public but that's how static variables work. You have to initialize them. You can you can access them here, of course. My stat uh, went all, a little bit off track there. I lost myself a little bit. I'm sorry, but that's how you do static functions and variables, and also regular member variables and functions, constructors, and all that stuff. The same goes for destructors and stuff like that. So hopefully this helped. Hopefully you understand how to do this. My final tips to you is to check out precompiled headers. is very important, very good to know. All right, template classes can only be created in header files that has to do with how they're built and linked that's only done in runtime for template classes we'll be we'll make a whole different tutorial for that but remember that if you're making a template class for a school project and you're making a cpp file for it don't you only need a header file otherwise it will be a problem so do that if you're doing inheritance we'll go through that as well uh, then you'll do the same way for all the classes but you'll just need to call the constructors in a different way. But check that out as well. There's a lot of things, it's very dynamic, very flexible, a lot of things you can go through here. But this is the bare bones basics, all right? Hopefully you got it. Please check out my other tutorials on C++ on all different types of topics. Thank you for checking this out. Thanks for sticking with me. Thanks for all the support. Take care. Hopefully I'll see you in the next one, all right? Bye-bye.